There's something that catches my eye when it comes to women because God is passionate about women. And there's so much that God is doing in the lives of women and there's so much that he can do with your life. And therefore, as you read the Rhapsody today, he told you to prepare your hearts because the things of God do not come by observation. You catch them with your spirits. You receive them by faith. As you receive the word of God and make it yours, possess it. We call it katalambano. Amen. You make it yours. You become what the word of God says you are. So whatever you hear today, make it yours. Tell somebody, make it yours. Make it yours. Amen. I want to start with a salutation and a greeting. Therefore, shall we go to the book of 2 John chapter 1? It's a salutation and a greeting to all you beautiful women that are here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, his presence is mighty in our midst. Amen. It says, to the elderly elder of the church and addresses this letter to the elect chosen lady, Syria and her children. So if I were you, I'd remove that name Syria and put your name right there. Amen. Therefore, it says to the elderly elder of the church addresses this letter. So this is a salutation. It's a greeting to who? To the elect. Amen. To the? Yeah. So right now, that's the first thing God is telling you this afternoon. That you are elect. Yeah. You are a chosen, what? Lady. Then it says, and her children for those who have children. Amen. And it says, whom I truly love. This is a love letter. Imagine today you get this WhatsApp to my elect, chosen lady and her children whom I truly love. And you wanted it to be from that one. Well, it is from that one. Yeah. The one who loves you more than anybody else. Yeah. Amen. So he says, not only are you elect, you are chosen. Not only, and he didn't say a woman. He said a lady. Yeah. He says, and the children whom I truly love. And not only, but I, but all but also all who are progressively learning to recognize and know and understand the truth. You are here. And why are you here? Because God called you. You might have been invited by a friend. You might have seen the banner. You might have been pulled here. But no matter how you came, God wanted you here today. Amen. You could have been in a mall, you could have been in a shop, but you're not there. God wanted you right here. Amen. Amen. So he chose you, he elected you to be here this afternoon to tell you words so that you can progressively learn and recognize the truth and understand the truth. You know, when you go into the airports with a desire to catch an aeroplane, you you go through the boarding gates, and then you go onto the plane. And then as you sit in the plane, there's one last statement that you're waiting to hear, and that's from the captain. And the captain announces itself and says, welcome on board on 747 Boeing, right? You know that, right? If you haven't heard it before, don't worry, after this meeting you'll hear it. Not on TV, but you in the plane. Yeah. Then he says, I want to welcome you on flights. We'll be cruising at the altitude of so many kilometers per hour. And we're expected to arrive at such and such a time. And then they give you even the weather of where you're going to. And then they tell you right now, you'll see the signs written, fasten your seatbelt. 
And the next thing you see the signs, you see the fuss. And then after that, the air hostesses come and they begin to show you all the things you should do, the signs. Amen? So, this is your captain speaking. Praise the Lord! There's only one requirement on this flight. Not only do you fasten your seat belt, there's one big requirement which the Lord told me is not allowed on this flight. It's called luggage. This one is cargoless. So if you came here with luggage, you cannot stay on this flight because the master of this flight said, no cargo, no baggage. Tell somebody, no cargo. You might have carried 60 kgs into this plane. Our air hostesses will tell you where to disembark so that you can take out that 60 kgs. You might have come here with 100 kgs or maybe a ton. But it's not allowed. Whether you came with stress, fatigue, bitterness, anger, that's how cargo, my sister. It's not allowed on this Boeing. So... As we get ready, I don't know what state you came in or what cargo you came in, but there's something that I want you to know what the Lord has said. Go to Isaiah 60. And I want it from the Amplified Version. Tell somebody, no cargo. He no says, because you cannot have cargo, he says, arise from the depression prostration in which circumstances have kept you what circumstances what depression what situations have kept you on this flight you are told arise from the depression what is it that you've been going through as a woman what has kept you depressed What has kept you in bondage? What has kept you in a position where you seem not to be able to come out? He says, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. What are those circumstances? What are those situations? What are those disadvantages? What are those mishaps? What are those arguments and those fights? What about those disappointments? God is saying today, O elect woman of God, O wonder woman of God, he says, arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. You see, he didn't even say it's people. He said it's circumstances have kept you in a certain position. Circumstances have kept you in a certain place. Circumstances have kept you in a place where you shouldn't be. And God is saying, I want you today to arise on it because on this journey, I want you cargoless. Whatever it is, God is not saying, look at the circumstance. He's not saying, do anything at this moment. He says, arise from it. The first place to arise from it is in your mind. You make up a decision right now and say, I've been kept in this place for too long. I've been kept in this position for too long. 
I've been kept in these circumstances for too long. I've been depressed. I've been disadvantaged. I've been sick. I've been one who's been cast down. And the Lord is telling me to arise. I will do exactly that. I will arise. In fact, I'm not postponing it. I'm making that decision right now to arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept me. Is it your job that has kept you in your circumstance? It is your husband. Is it your children? Is it your business, whatever the circumstance has been, today God says on this journey I want you cargoless, arise yeah. tell somebody arise, arise. From, that from that situation yes you need to it's not trying to look for the solution, he didn't say look for the solution he didn't say find the door. He said arise from that situation. And today don't try to justify why you're in it. Don't try to reason why you've been in this situation. He doesn't want your excuses. He doesn't want your reasons. He doesn't want to know how long it's been. He says whatever it is that has tied you down and made you stay in one place, made you stay in a mindset of defeat, of depression, of rejection. He says today, rise from it. Go back. I want to show you something in the same scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Say, so I, I arise. He says, in which circumstances have kept you? Then it says, rise to a new life. Amen. It says, rise to what? To a new life. Amen. He didn't say rise to another level of depression. He said what? Rise to a new life. So right now in your notebook say, I have risen to a new life. That's your testimony already right now as we begin. I have risen to a new, don't look at how it's going to happen. Just like you when you jump on the plane, you don't even know where north or east or west is. You just sit there and you put your confidence in the pilot. He knows where to take you. You're on board now. Don't worry where east or west is. Just know that you're going to a destination. And God is telling you this afternoon that I rise to a new life. So say, declare right now and say, I have arisen to a new life. Amen. Amen. Have you made that decision? Yes. If you decide today this is where you are, you will find before we finish everything, those chains, those depressions, those circumstances will be not on you anymore. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be your name, Lord. He says, rise to a new life. Hallelujah. Because there's a life that God has given us. There's a life to live that he came to give. Thank you. Just let's see where this life begins. Hallelujah. Go back, go to John chapter 1. Where this life begins. Thank you, Lord. I'll be doing a, a teaching. So pay attention. Amen. Because when you get this, if you get this, you're the next headlines. I'm telling you. And not the sun. No. Because I want to be headlines in the sun. No. At least choose the star. It says, in the beginning, before all time, was the word. Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. Verse 2. He was present originally with God. Who? The word. So the word was originally present with God. Verse 3. All things were made and came into existence through him. Who? The word. Who was in the beginning with God. Right? Then it says, and without him 
was not even one thing that it was not even one thing made that has come to be. So that means everything that came into existence, everything that came into being, came by the word. So this gives us a principle that anything that ever is to ever be established or come into being can only come into being by the word. Nothing else. It does not come by complaining. It does not come by tears. It does not come by resisting. Everything that was ever created by God was created by the word. So it's a principle. Anything you ever need to bring into existence, you bring it into existence with the word. Verse 4. I love this one. He says, in him was life. Who? In the word. What was in the word? Life. He says, in him was life. And says, and the life was the light of men. So in the word was life. And this life was the light of men. So here we're told that the word was life. And this word we know him as Jesus. So Jesus was the life who is the light of men. So that means Jesus had life. But how can they say that the word had life? What is life? Anybody? What is life? Pastor? The ability to exist. So it says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So we see that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and what? The word created everything because nothing was made that was made without the word. So the word brought everything into existence. And in this word was life. And this life was the light of man. That means when man got this life, there was no darkness in it. That means darkness dispelled, right? And who are they talking about here? We said the word. And who is the word? Jesus Christ. So Jesus is life. And then he says, and the life was the light of men. Tell somebody, the light was the life of men. The life was the Amen. Now I want you to see what the Bible says about Jesus. Go to 1 John chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 1, verse 3. It says, what we have seen and ourselves heard, we are telling you. So this is Apostle John telling the people that what we have seen and ourselves heard, we are also telling you so that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship and partners and partakers with us. And this fellowship that we have, which is a distinguishing mark of Christian, is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So it says, we are enjoying the fellowship of the Father and the Son, and we want you to enjoy it with us. I don't know if you enjoy your fellowship with God. Our relationship with God is to be enjoyed. Have a fellowship with the Father where you have sweet fellowship it's not a place where you go to when you just want to pray. There must be fellowship. Verse, go, okay, guess, go verse four. He says, and we are now writing these things to you so that our joy in seeing you included may be full and your joy may be complete. He so says, we are talking to you about these things because we will be joyful when we see you joyful. But not only do we want to see you joyful, we want your joy to be complete. Because I know amongst us women, women are big fakers. Big, big fakers. If they're not faking in bed, they're faking at work, they're faking everywhere else. It's true. I'm like, what is she talking about? You know. <laughs> P 
Praise the Lord. He says, I want your joy to be complete. So that when you smile, your smile is from within. When you laugh, your laughter is from within. When you walk with confidence, your confidence is from within. When you speak, your speech is from within. You're not pretending. You're not trying to be who you're not. You are full and complete. Because women do it. They've, I'm telling you, say them, hi. The moment they finish that smile, they want to run away and cry. They're looking for the nearest exit. Maybe your visitors come into your house. There has been World War IV in your home. As soon as the visitors come, how are you, how are things? Oh, they're fine, thank you. They're excellent. And inside, there's no completeness. Then you go to work. Hey, how was your weekend? Oh, for us, we are Christians. It was blessed. Inside. Then you meet your boss. How are you doing? Then all of a sudden you want to look like, you know what? You're more than a conqueror. You know the word says so, but I'm excellent. But inside. So he says, I want your joy complete. No faking complete so that when you smile after this meeting it's coming from the inside out when your joy is flowing it's flowing from the inside out when you are walking you are not timid you're not afraid because everything from inside is coming out joy complete amen so that's me joy complete tell your neighbor neighbor no more faking I don't know where your neighbor was faking. Tell them no more faking. <laughs> Let's go for lunch. Oh, you know, no, no, I'm on a diet. You have no money. No more faking. <laughs> Tell your neighbor no more faking. Complete joy. Complete joy. Amen. Yes. Complete joy. Complete joy. Let, let's, I think I started you earlier. Let's go to now. I wanted to talk about the life. Let's go to John 1 and then we take, go back to where we started. 1 John chapter 1 verse 1. It says, we are writing about the word of life. Right? We are writing about the word of life. Remember John 1 where we read it was said in the beginning was the word, right? And nothing was made without the word. And what? The word was life. Then it says we are writing about the word of life in him. Who? The word. It says who existed in the beginning, whom we have heard, whom we have seen with our own eyes. Whom we have gazed upon for ourselves. Whom we have touched with our own hands. When I read this, I said, Lord, they saw Jesus. They heard him speak. They touched him. Oh, what a privilege. What an honor. He says, we saw life with our own eyes. You see, they didn't even mention Jesus. He says, we are writing about the word of life in him. And what does this word of life say? Who existed from the beginning? Whom we have heard. What did they hear? The word of life. It says, which existed from the beginning, whom we have heard, whom we have seen with our own eyes. What did they see with their own eyes? The word of life. It says, whom we gazed for ourselves. What did they gaze on? The word of life. And it says, and have touched with our own hands, what? The word of life. Now we go to verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. It says, and the life. Remember Isaiah told us, arise to a new life. It says, and the life, the aspect of his being was revealed 
made manifest, demonstrated, and we saw as eyewitnesses. So here is John telling us that what did we have eyewitness of? The life. And the life was what? Manifested. The life was what? Demonstrated. We saw as eyewitnesses and are testifying to declare to you the life. That means not only did we see here, but now we saw it manifested and demonstrated and now we are testifying and declared to you the life. That means there is a life. Ask your neighbor, are you getting this? It says the eternal life in him who already existed with the father who actually was made visible, revealed to us his followers. That means there's a life that was demonstrated. There was a life that was revealed and which was made visible to his followers. What is this life that can be seen, heard, and touched, demonstrated, and revealed? John 3.16 Tell somebody life. John 3.16. It says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him who who? Who? The life. Who? The life. the life of Jesus. Who is the word? Then he says, shall not perish. Come to destruction. Be lost. But have everlasting what? Life. That means Jesus came that if anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, what nationality, what creed, hallelujah, no matter who you are, it says if anybody would what? Believe in him, would trust in him, would cling to him, would rely on him, should not perish, neither come to destruction. Why are you near destruction? Why are your things failing? Have you not clung unto him? Have you not trusted him? Have you not put your faith in him? He says when you put your faith in him, when you trust in him, you will not come to destruction. Your marriage will not come to destruction. Your children will not come to destruction. Your business will not come to destruction. Neither will you be lost. That means you're not going nowhere slowly. You are going somewhere. He says, but have Eternal, everlasting life. Again, what is there? Life. Because there are many living dead. Just finishing oxygen. But the ones, after this meeting, they will not be the living dead. They'll be the living, living. Yeah. Tell somebody, don't be the living dead. Without the life. He says, but have eternal, everlasting life. Right? So already we see that God has a plan. And that plan is for us to have a life that cannot be destroyed. That's the life God has purposed for us. A life that cannot be destroyed. A life where we lose nothing in life. Where you say, I keep losing everything. I lose my mind. I lose my job. I lose my family. You will never lose anything in your life as long as you get this word that we're giving you today. Say, so I'll never lose anything in my life. Never. 
He says, now they come to destruction. That means no matter who tries to do anything in your life, they might throw anything. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Because you know what? You are destruction proof. They cannot destroy you. You are destruction proof. Because it says what? You cannot be destroyed. That's the mindset of the just. You cannot be destroyed. Do you understand? Many are crying because they think that they will perish. But the Bible is telling us you cannot perish. Why? Because you are destruction proof. So I'm destruction proof. Amen. So you got fired. So I'm destruction proof. Told you, take a hike. So you might tell you you don't love me anymore. You don't want me anymore. So I'm destruction proof. It don't hurt me. It don't do anything to me. I am destruction proof. That's how you respond to life. Not when you're crying. <sighs> In Shona, the, if the, the husband doesn't want you anymore, he sends money back, a small token. And they call it Gupura to say, I don't want this one anymore. He can even send five rands. And the moment your family receive the five rands, it means they've agreed with your husband that he doesn't want you anymore. That means he's discharged you. So maybe you've been discharged. You still say, I am destruction proof. I am destruction proof. If you get this in your mind, if you get this as your thought process, that no matter what comes my way, no matter what happens to me, do you understand? I am destruction proof. You can throw your best weapon. You can throw whatever you want in my direction. I know it is written, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am destruction proof. Nothing. You laugh at the enemy. Do you understand? Your, your part is to laugh. You said, devil, is that the best you could do? Because no matter what you throw in my way, no matter what you throw in my, dire in my direction, guess what? I am destruction proof. I might seem like I'm staggering, but don't you worry. This is not going to last for long. I will soon arise. And today is that day I have arisen. Because he's given us a life that cannot be destroyed. Yeah. And this life, ladies, is called Zoe. Yeah. The Zoe, Zoe means the God kind of life. Go to John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. Oh, pastor, you don't know what I've been going through. I'm just telling you, sweetie. It will not destroy you. It will not destroy you. You might be limping right now, but don't you worry. After today's meeting, you will not be limping anymore. Hallelujah. You will be restored by the power of the Holy Ghost. It says the thief comes only to, in order to steal and kill and destroy. And this is the words of my master. My Lord, my God. It says, I came. Not I am come. It says, I came that they may have life. And it says, and enjoy what? Life. Did he come? Yes. Are you enjoying life? If you're not, you begin today. Amen. Amen. If you've been living in depression, prostration, and circumstances, today say he came. Hallelujah. He came. He came so that I may enjoy life. Every day. You're now having women's meetings of discussing the problem. No, arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. It says what? I came that they may have. Hallelujah. That they may have. And it says, and enjoy life. That means there's a kind of life God wants you to have. There's a kind of life that Jesus came to give. And that kind of life is the one that you should to enjoy. Hallelujah. Take off those tears from your face. Take off that sadness from your body. It's time to enjoy your life, my sister. It's time to live in this life. I just don't want them to enjoy it. Right? What do they want? It says, have it. I mean, what? 
in abundance to the full until it overflows. So that means you become contagious. The moment you're in anybody's space, hallelujah, your joy is overflowing. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is overflowing, hallelujah. No matter who you come into contact with, there's a life, there's a joy, there's an enjoyment of life. It's overflowing. Tell somebody, I have joy to the overflow. I have joy to the overflow. Just shake your neighbor. Neighbor, if you don't know how to smile, you part two lips. Let's start there. Because some are still looking, hmm, there's nothing funny about my life. No, he came to give you life. Just check your neighbor, neighbor. Have you, let's practice now. Because when you go out there, you'll be doing that a lot. And no faking. See if your neighbor is smiling, say, no faking. Now give me that joy. Give me that joy. Give me that life. Give me that enjoyment. tell you this woman you know there's so many women who are controlled whether a man loves them or man does not love them whether they have a man in their life let me tell you let me tell you when Gabriel was sent he was not sent to Joseph when Gabriel was sent he was sent when Mary was alone he was sent when Mary was alone. He did not need Joseph. Do you understand? Mary was alone, a virgin. Hallelujah. She didn't need a man to fulfill the destiny of God. She didn't. If God wants to do something in your life, whether he is there or he's not there, I'm here to tell you, my sister, God does not need a man by your side to fulfill his purpose. Say, my purpose is being fulfilled. Yes. Where was Joseph? The angel had to go and comfort him and say, don't worry, don't worry. The miracle has already happened. Don't worry. That's you. The miracle has already happened. Your destiny is in motion. Hallelujah. Your purpose is in motion. The only time you smile is when he said good morning to you. Ah! He didn't say good morning to me. He did not sleep at home. He where I told you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. So your destiny is not controlled by who's in your life and who's not in your life. No. They left you so what? My destiny will continue. My purpose will continue. Tell them, watch my space. Whoa! Watch my space. Hey! Oh, Mary said, but she says, no, you know, she first wanted, she told she, she, she needed a man. She's like, you know, but how can this be since I know not a man? Because women are always thinking, man. <laughs> says, don't worry. Don't worry. It's not about that man, darling. It's not about Joseph, darling. What God wants to do, he wants to do with you. Yeah. Tell somebody, what God wants to do in your life, sweetie. Let him do it. Amen. Amen. Say, I have the life of God, which cannot be destroyed. So we're saying, Jesus came that you may have life. And not only have life, but he says, to enjoy it. 
but not only enjoy it, but what? To have it in abundance until it overflows. So maybe you in that depression like, no, I'm to enjoy my life. I'm to enjoy all the things that God has given me. Even you're eating, you know what I mean? What's those green vegetables? What do you call them in this country? We call them muriwa kovo. What do you call it in South Africa? Morojo, right? Maybe that's all you're eating. Pop and morojo every day. Enjoy and say, Morocco, you are delicious. Don't worry, because you'll soon eat the lobsters and the oysters and all the things. You'll soon eat them anyway. Because after this meeting, you've been taught what to do. You will no longer be doing cabbage. You have learned from the ladies. A chemist, a teacher, a mother. You learn from a student, a group pastor's wife, her own pastor who runs her own branch. You heard from them, a business entrepreneur. Like, oh, if they can do all that. Me also. Right? Right? Tell somebody what's going on in your mind. Are you changing? Are you changing the way you think? Are you seeing things differently? Are you seeing things differently? Are you going to enjoy your life? Help you. In case your neighbor is still, you know, we said we're already on board, we are cruising. In case their mind is still on ground level, please help them. So, neighbor, where are you? <laughs> board with you yes. just making sure we don't want to leave anybody behind yes. praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. now I want you to read first John chapter 5 verse 12 so he came to give me life that I may enjoy this life listen to this it says he who possesses the son has that life he who possesses who? The son. Who is the son? Jesus Christ. Has what? That life. I have that life. Say, so I have Zoe. Zoe is the God kind of life. It's the life that is superior to anything. It's a life that is above all things. It's a life of distinction. It's a life of elevation. It's a life of honor. It's a life of glory. It's a life where you sail above the rest. It's called the divine life. That very life that Jesus had when he was on here on earth. That life that Jesus had. That life that made Jesus walk on water. That life which made Jesus raise the dead. That life that made Jesus turn water into wine. That life that made Jesus blind, open blind eyes. He says that life. Whoever has the son has that life. The question is, do you know what life you have? My sister, do you know the kind of life you have? Maybe you're still living the human kind of life. If you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he says, whoever has, he didn't distinguish whether who has a degree. Mm. He says, those who are working, no. He says, anybody who has the Son, anybody who has said yes to Jesus, if you have not yet said yes to Jesus, I'm here to tell you today is that day when you say yes to Jesus. He says, is anybody go back to the scripture thank you Jesus go back it says he who possesses so here we say she who possesses the son has what that life he didn't say he says he possesses what that life what is that life the superior life what life the Zoe life what life the God kind of life what life the one you enjoy you gotta let it soak like, no, man. Ah, I'm being told. She who possesses the son ah, has that life. Has that life that cannot be destroyed. Has that life that brings joy to the overflow. Has that life that makes you a champion. 
has that life which is from above has that life that makes you a victor has that life that tells you no weapon formed against you shall prosper has that life that can make you walk on water has that life that can give you peace that there might be a storm and you are in the boat and you can sleep when the storm is raging on that kind of life that no matter what storms are raging around you you have that life you can sleep hallelujah that peace that surpasses all understanding he says whoever possesses the son whoever has Jesus as Lord and Savior in their life has that life not a life of defeat not a life of failure not a life of destruction my sister not a life where you're always crying every day not a life where you're counting coins every day not a life where you're being blown every single day he says if anybody 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 has that life Hey, I have that life. I refuse to live like a mere man. I have that life. I have the life of God in me. I have so way inside of me. I have that life. I refuse to live like this. I refuse to live like this. I have possessed the son. I have possessed the son. I have. I have, I have that life. I refuse to live like this. No, he came that I may have life. Not only have it, but to enjoy it. Not only to enjoy that I might live it to the overflow. I have possessed the son. You see, I love the word that they say. It says, he who has possessed. It's when you make it yours. You see, you can take something. It doesn't mean you have possessed it. Possession, that means you've taken control. Possession means you've made it yours. When you possess something, you will not let anything take it away from you. Just like a mother hen. When a mother hen has possessed her chicks, no matter what, no matter which eagle comes, she will defend her chicks. But that's why the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, my sisters. Because when you have this life, you need to work it out. Do not let the circumstances of life tear you down. Do not let the situations of life bring you down. But he who has the son, he who possesses, go back. Thank you, Jesus. Then it says, and he who does not possess the son does not have that life. That means there's a distinction to the one who has the life and to the one who does not. Then you look at your life like, Am I living like the one who does not have? I arise from the depression, from the prostration in which circumstances have kept me. I have and I possess the sun and therefore I have this life. I have it. I have it, I have it, you have it. You have this life. Go on, continue reading. There's something that I want you to know. Go to verse 13. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The people didn't get it. He writes again a sentence after this. He says, I write to you who believe in, adhere to, Trust in and rely on, on the name of the Son of God in the peculiar services and blessings conferred by him on men. What does it mean? He says, I'm writing to you who believe that there are peculiar 
services. And there are peculiar blessings that are conferred by him, the son, on men. If you knew that there are peculiar blessings, if you knew there were peculiar services, that means that services you can get from the sun. But have you ever used those services? You didn't know. He says, peculiar. That means they are different. That means your life will turn out different. It will not be like your neighbors. It will not be like your sisters. It will not be like the woman from Hollywood. It will not be like any other person. There's something peculiar about your life. That's what says what? You were a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. That you should be, you know when people look at you, they must say you are different. There's something different about you. You are not like Jane. You are not like that one. You are not like her. You are different. Why? You are peculiar. Why? He conferred peculiar blessings. He conferred peculiar services. That's why on the services he says, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask him anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have those things that we ask of him. These are the peculiar services. Peculiar. It says if you ask, why is it peculiar? Because it says if you ask him anything, it's peculiar. Because you are the one who writes and asks no matter how strange, where they say, Lord, I'm going to be the first billionaire in this world as a woman. There might have been once before me, but I take advantage of my peculiar blessing. I take advantage of my peculiar services. I take advantage because unless you take advantage of what God has given you, unless you take advantage of what God has done for you, you will live in the dump for the rest of your life. The one who knows and takes possession. Or like Mary said, okay, Lord, let it be according to your word. I don't need to understand how it's going to turn out. I don't need to understand the dynamics of how it's going to work. But all I'm saying right now, there are peculiar blessings in my life. There are peculiar services in my life. That's all that matters. This situation has taken too long to change. But because I know that there's a peculiar blessing in my life, because I know that there are peculiar services in my life, that says what? Well, you shall say to this mountain, be ye removed and be ye cast into the sea. Those are the peculiar services. All you do is speak to the mountain and the rest, the peculiar services of the Holy Ghost, he will do. Yes. Peculiar services. Peculiar services. You've been waiting for people to do things for you. They're not doing this for me. They're not doing this for me. He's not doing this for me. My mother, my sister, my husband, my brother. No, no. There are peculiar services for you. Go back to the scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, so that you may know. Oh, Jesus. It's like, I don't know if you are getting it. So that you may know. With settled and absolute knowledge maybe you read about it it wasn't absolute knowledge maybe you heard somebody speak about it it has not become absolute knowledge for you but it says I don't want you just to hear of it I don't want you to just write it in your notebook I don't want you to just write it in your iPad it's not for your iPad this message it's not for your notebook this message I want you to come with a settled and absolute knowledge that you already have life yes eternal life Because many have it in their notebooks. Many heard it being spoken by Pastor B, Pastor Andrew. But it's time you know. 
It's time you know, not only know, but that it be settled. That absolute knowledge. It's time to stop reading. It's time to stop listening to sermons. It's time to have absolute knowledge. How many years have you been going to church? How many ladies' meetings have you attended? How many prophets have you gone to? How many hands have been laid on you? What matters when you come to a place where it's settled in your heart? And you have it as absolute. Absolute means there's nothing else beyond it. That there is no alternative. There is no plan B. When it's plan A, it's plan A. And plan A will succeed. There's no spare wheel. I know you women. If he says this, I'll say this. If they do this, I'll do that. You always have an alternative. Absolute knowledge. Absolute. That will separate you from the life of mediocrity. When you know and you know and you know and you know without a shadow of doubt, this which I'm telling you says that you may know that you have eternal. You have God. Oh, my brother, my sisters. I cannot go home until you know. God said, I must tell you that women allow circumstances to bring them down because they don't know they have this life. They don't know. And today, it's a day you put a rubber stamp on this word and it's settled in your heart that I have Zoe. I have the God kind of life. I have the same life that Jesus had here on earth, the same life that God has, I have it. Says, I want you to know. I want you to know. I don't want you shouting about it. I don't want you hallelating about it. I don't want you to make a song about it until it's in your heart. Because when you know you have the life of God, he says you shall be like a tree planted by the waterside whose leaves will always be green. And will continue to bear fruit. Not one month you're making it and the next month you're not. He says, will continue. And says, and whatsoever she shall do. Lord, are you saying whatever I do? Because the Bible says, if that spirit, if that same, he says if, do you understand? He says if, that same spirit, Romans 8 verse 11, thank you Jesus, if that same spirit, just put it there, Romans 8 verse 11. 
Thank you, Jesus. It says, and if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then if it does, it says then he who raised up Christ from the dead will also restore to life. Your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies, through Him who dwells in you, if He dwells in you, does He dwell in you, my sister? He says you bring to life. Does it dwell in you? The same spirit that raised Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you understand this? They had bound Jesus in death clothes. His body was mummified. So that he would not rot. Mummified that no one could easily cut through. The mummification. But he says, if that spirit that raised Jesus after three days, that raised Lazarus after four days, if that same spirit dwells in you, if that same spirit dwells inside of you, he says, then if you know that he dwells inside of you, if you know that he dwells inside of you, you would rise from that situation. It's not over. 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 That same spirit. So if he dwells in you, do you know it? That though Jesus was bound, mummified, Mary saw him on his feet and said, Master, that same spirit who vitalize, make a life, quicken your mortal body. That means no sickness can latch itself on its body, on your body. No demon raised from hell can destroy you. No weapon, no word, no rejection, nothing that can be raised against you can stand. If that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if that same spirit that raised Jesus 